So it is uh, March 9th. Tomorrow we have six more states voting. And Elizabeth Warren is nowhere to be found. No endorsement of Bernie Sanders. So what that tells us is that she's not going to endorse Bernie Sanders. Now, in the event she were to endorse Bernie Sanders, that could change the dynamic of this race. It's not a foregone conclusion, but I mean, what Bernie needs is momentum. Over the weekend, we saw Kamala Harris and Cory Booker come out to endorse Joe Biden. So, you know, uh, corporate Democrat after corporate Democrat keeps coming out to endorse Joe Biden, and Bernie Sanders doesn't have the endorsements of other 2020 Democratic Party contenders. So what this tells the average non-savvy political consumer of news is that, oh, well, there must be something about this Joe Biden guy. Maybe, you know, these people who I guess I trust believe Joe Biden is the best against Donald Trump, so I should support Joe Biden. Elizabeth Warren, it's not a guarantee that she can turn this around, but by not rising to this occasion... It tells you everything you need to know about Elizabeth Warren. Now, I was naive enough to give her a second chance after she abandoned us in 2016 because I believe in second chances, I believe in forgiveness, and it's one of my main faults. But by not endorsing Bernie Sanders, what this tells us is that any shred of progressivism that she has, anything she wants to see codified into law that would help people... She's not serious about. If you're not endorsing the candidate with the most progressive platform, then you can't say that you cared about big structural reform. You can't say that you're serious about beating Donald Trump because Elizabeth Warren herself has spoken about Joe Biden's weakness against Donald Trump and his weakness as a general election candidate. So she's sitting back and she's saying, you know what? If I don't speak up, Bernie might lose. Trump is probably going to win. But I'm just too butthurt because Bernie supporters sent me snake emojis. I mean, this is her legacy. This will be her lasting legacy. She didn't support the most diverse, enthusiastic, young coalition of voters because some of them sent snake emojis to her on Twitter after she smeared Bernie Sanders. That's the legacy that she wants to have. Now, in 2024 or 2028, when, you know, she presumably will opt for another run, we're going to remember this. And she might come prepared with a really great set of policy ideas. She might, you know, step away from her weird botched Medicare for All rollout plan where she separates it into two legislative fights. Maybe she comes prepared, but regardless... We're always going to remember the time that Elizabeth Warren, when push came to shove, showed us who she really was. This is full mask off. She doesn't care about any of these progressive policies. At the end of the day, this is about her own ego. And we're all supposed to be really nice to Elizabeth Warren currently. We're supposed to court her, right? Because this is a time of grieving. And I get it. Like, for her voters, I think that we owe them that respect because I get you know, seeing all your hopes and dreams crash when the candidate who you support loses. I get that. But for Elizabeth Warren, she wants to be a leader. She has been a leader of the progressive movement, one of them up until this point, And now she's choosing to uh, sit idly by. Now, I mean, the Working Families Party, credit to them, they endorsed um, Bernie Sanders. Okay, you made the wrong decision, but you're trying to right that wrong. I can forgive that. Uh, Justice Democrats, I didn't realize that they hadn't endorsed Bernie yet because they're trying to pretend like there was a different, there was no difference between uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. Okay, that's embarrassing, nonetheless. All right. But everyone else who wants you to think that they're progressive, Ayanna Presley, Julian Castro, if they don't endorse Bernie Sanders, then when they inevitably, you know, try to advance their careers, run for the Senate, run again, you have to remember what they were doing when there was this huge call to action, when we actually had a chance at electing someone who supported the policies that they claimed to support, they were nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And it's funny because uh, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, Beto O'Rourke, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, they're all young enough to where we can expect them to run again. 
And I, I would imagine that like Beto and Kamala are going to try to position themselves as progressives in the future. But now, what does this say? That they opted for Biden, a center-right leaning Democrat who was uh, a segregationist. I think that what we need to realize is that endorsements don't necessarily mean everything. Sometimes they make a difference, sometimes they don't. I think that all of those endorsements of Joe Biden really made a difference, right? Because the perception of momentum is really what people get behind. Just seeing a good poll for a candidate is enough to create this bandwagon effect where people, you know, kind of unite behind the person who they believe they can win. It's why when you see someone get a little bit of a bump, they quickly surge into frontrunner status. It happened with Elizabeth Warren in the fall. It happened with Bernie Sanders, you know, just recently after Nevada and before that. And now it's happening with Joe Biden. So, you know, if you don't want to step up and fight and endorse, even knowing that, you know, um, it might not mean anything. It just shows where your commitments are. Like, I don't know if Elizabeth Warren's endorsement of Bernie will help, but could it? The answer is yes. And that's why this is so devastating. That's why it's so telling about Elizabeth Warren and her priorities, right? I don't know why she's choosing to not endorse Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden or, or, or Joe Biden. But I mean, like, what she said essentially after she dropped out was that I'm not ready to make that decision yet. Just the mere fact that you have to be ready and it's not just automatic. It shows that you don't have that fight deep in your core. You don't actually care about these issues as much as you say you do. You just saw, you know, that um, you wanted to run for president and the progressive lane was the lane you chose and uh, that's what you stuck with. But you don't actually believe in anything. Or maybe you do believe, but you're just too scared. Either way, it doesn't matter, right? No matter what conclusion we come to about Elizabeth Warren's um, decision-making process here. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the progressive movement needed her. She could have helped us, and she chose to not do anything. Now, there's still a minimal amount of time. She could prove me wrong. But if she makes an endorsement after Tuesday, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. At that point, it's too late. It's going to be a lot more difficult to, you know, turn this around. Now, I'm not going to say that if Bernie Sanders performs poorly on Tuesday that it's over because I don't think it is. I think he has enough resources to go all the way to the convention. But I mean, what we want is to not have the establishment pile on. We don't want to make this more difficult for ourselves. So if you show up at the last minute, it's as if, you know, you didn't show up at all because it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Now, I never really believed that Elizabeth Warren would endorse Bernie. In fact, part of me thought that um, she would endorse Biden, and maybe that's still the case, but I actually was kind of expecting her to endorse Biden uh, before Tuesday because, I mean, you just, you kind of expect Elizabeth Warren to disappoint you. She keeps doing it. She had one of the largest super PACs in the race after railing against super PACs. So when you think about Elizabeth Warren, you can't not think about the ways that she's disappointed the progressive movement. And she tries so hard to play patty cake with the establishment when, you know, even back in the short window of time when she was saying she would have a contested convention, contested convention to steal it from Bernie Sanders, um, you know, that, that was laughable because they're not going to give it to her, even if that were the scenario that we were still looking at. So Elizabeth Warren, she has the worst political instincts and you can, you can blame the people that she hires. But at the end of the day, if you're not strong enough to push away those advisors who are giving you horrible advice, then you're not a good candidate. And if you're not here for us now, we won't be he here for you in the future. And, um, yeah, this this is her moment, and she's choosing to sit out the most consequential election in our lifetimes. Because it's not the general election that is truly going to matter, it's the primary. Because if Bernie's the nominee, we've got a chance of beating Trump. If Biden's the nominee, Trump's going to steamroll him. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I think the writing's on the wall. And uh, we all will remember that Elizabeth Warren, for a second election in a row, wasn't there for us. So um, this is her legacy. Okay.